Hi again. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. Art and I are again with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister, font of knowledge, medical expert. This uh, We always learn so much from you, Dr. Liz. It's always a pleasure, John. And Dr. Liz, I have a question for you. We, we recently had a conversation about HPV uh, vaccines, uh, and we talked about it, its uh, efficacy. We talked about who should get it and so on and so forth. Um, but we never really talked about, I guess, the other end of it is uh, ovarian cancer. And how big a deal is that? I mean, is that something that uh, is prevalent? Uh, should uh, uh, women be really worried about it? Uh, and if they get it, uh, what are the chances of them coming out the other side of it in good shape? Can you address maybe some of that for our audience? Yeah, absolutely. To your point, Art, cervical cancer is relatively easy to detect. In fact, we can detect it even before it becomes cancer. Lots of data and technology and ways that we have to do that. Ovarian cancer, on the other hand, is often called the silent killer because it is usually, there's no screening for it. People have tried over the last few decades. There's no effective screening that we could do. And therefore it's usually found in more advanced stages, harder to treat, harder to cure. Hmm. Okay. So it's not something that women have to be very scared of because it's luckily not very common. Uh, one place that I read said, said it's in fewer than 2% of women in the US. I think it's really quite below that actually. What is important is the potential for increasing the risk uh, in women who have a particular gene mutation. It's the BRAC, we call it the BRCA, BRCA, uh, though there's two gene mutations that increase the risk of breast cancer, and they also very significantly increase the risk of ovarian cancer. Okay. Hmm. I have I have a patient in my practice who has that gene mutation in her family, her mom, her sister, and so she got tested after their mom had breast cancer at a very young age, they all got tested all have the gene. And so my friend uh, and patient went and had her ovaries removed as a prophylactic measure. Oh, okay. okay. Because, yeah, so with the BRCA, I'm looking at the numbers so I can get them right. With the BRCA1 mutation, there can be up to a 46% chance. That's almost half. Wow. Almost 50-50 chance by age 70 of yeah. developing ovarian cancer. And the BRCA2 is not as bad, but it's still way more than without the gene mutation. That's up to a 27% risk uh, of getting ovarian cancer by age 70. Yeah, so if there's a family still, history, yeah. Still right. not good odds. Yeah. Exactly. So do you recommend uh, gene testing for all women? Not for all women just yet. Although I really do think that <clears throat> in, a, in a while from now, maybe a few more decades, uh, gene, te I think gene testing will be very routine. I do think that. Uh, and but in so right now we reserve that for women with family history. Uh, if there's male breast cancer, women in their in his family should get tested. <clears throat> and so and then as as with this person that I was mentioning, uh, their mom who developed breast cancer very young. All right, so that's the type of risk factor. As far as symptoms. The, that's one of the reasons it's so hard to diagnose. Symptoms of ovarian cancer overlap with all kinds of other problems. So for example, digestive disruption, uh, bowel problems, constipation, diarrhea, that, that type of thing. It can be so overlapping with many other conditions. Also, usually by the time it gets to that point, again, like we were saying, it's more advanced. Uh, in fact, there can be cases of ovarian cancer where we never even find something on the ovary, uh, but it's confirmed when the patient has the abdominal complaints, uh, fluid in the belly, and bloating, that type of thing, and then that shows the cancer cells. So it can be really challenging. Yeah. 
Yeah, but, I can see that. So and right. yet it's still relatively rare. Correct. It is definitely not anywhere near as common as most of the other uh, cancers that affect women. So that's very, very fortunate. Yeah. All right, so if a woman hasn't had uh, uh, her her genes tested to see if she has the BRCA gene uh, because she had no particular reason for it, but uh, you just scared the hell out of her, uh, that there's that small chance that, you know, maybe she should go get her ovaries taken out if she's already had kids and whatever else. Uh, and before she goes Dr. Google crazy, is there right. a... Is there a decent resource, uh, like is there an ovariancancer.org or something that might uh, uh, put somebody's mind at ease that they probably don't have the steps to take? Yeah, absolutely. I like to refer people to the American College of OBGYN. Uh, that website has very up-to-date information uh, and, they, and they update it as they go. So when new information comes to light, they incorporated and reissue committee opinions. Uh, so that can be very helpful. I think one thing that's really important is for a woman to advocate for herself. Uh, if she, a lot of us remember Gilda Radner, uh, who mm. died really young of ovarian cancer. And this was, she was a classic situation of a younger woman who had these very non-specific symptoms. And it just took a really long time to make the diagnosis. So it's important for women to, like you said, not to go Google crazy. I always say I've never seen anybody go on the internet and feel better. So <laughs> it's important not to do that, but it's also important to stay with it if you're not feeling good uh, to make sure that your doctor rules that out. There have been blood tests that have come and gone that continue to try to be developed to be a marker for the development of ovarian cancer. None of them are really good for screening. Even pelvic ultrasound uh, has just not been, uh, the data was that out of 600 pelvic ultrasounds that were performed, uh, they found one patient with something on her ovary that could then be evaluated. The problem with the screening, the, that type of screening is that you don't wanna have unnecessary surgery. If you don't have the gene, you, you're not at, elevated risk for ovarian cancer. Still, it's still better, uh, even though these surgeries are, are getting easier, especially when they're prophylactic before there's disease, mm, there's still risks and everything in life is risk versus, versus benefit. So we don't want to uh, over overdo it, but it's important to be aware and for women to advocate for themselves. Yeah, good advice, thank you. Welcome. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.